Some nice slides to start things off, just to kind of put, put things in a bit of context. Um, Accenture talks about this idea that you know, the massive growth in, in, in complexity that's happening at the moment. We have, a, we have a perfect storm of everything is getting faster and more complex. The, the markets are speeding up. Products that must be produced and moved into the supply chain and quality controlled are, are becoming more complex, and we're starting to see combinations of services and products coming together. The workforce um, that are producing these products or controlling these products are, are, you know, have new expectations in terms of, of what they expect um, from, from their employers uh, and the organizations that they're working in. And the economy is changing with so much disruption coming in from other sectors now, from Amazon entering the, the healthcare market and so on and so forth. Um, there's, a, there's a huge amount of, of challenge um, and changes in the technology in, in, in the market at the moment. And in parallel, a lot of changes in the technology landscape. This, this slide is probably out of date, and, and you all know just how much data is being, being uh, generated now in the last two years, more than in the history of, entire history of, of mankind. Um, but a massive amount of, of complexity um, uh, to, uh, and data to be collected and analyzed. Um, and again, the compute power uh, growing exponentially from, from the slow adoption of, of mainframes from the 50s onwards to now what we're seeing a, a burst in, in, in excitement around quantum computing and, and Accenture and IBM and others have started to really do some, some interesting work in the quantum computing space. But again, you know, the adoption rate of AI compared to some of the older technology has been, has been quite startling. So Accenture, our take on Industry 4.0 is, is we refer to Industry X.0, and, and essentially what we're, we're talking about here is, is the idea that you know, you can, companies can transform the core of their business through linking better research and development and design of new products through the production of the process or the product and the aftercare support of the product. So it's not just about manufacturing and driving efficiency in manufacturing, it's also about linking all of the, of the silos within companies, which in some industries has been done better than others, aerospace being one that's, that's, that's this is worked very well and others less so. Um, and, and when you have those kind of IT architecture to transform that core and link up these parts, these key parts of the organization, adding in digital enablers um, like data analytics, like advanced visualization tools um, to really drive value out of that data that you're collecting in your architecture. And while Industry 4.0 and a lot of the messaging around that focuses on how um, you know, digitization can help drive acceleration and efficiency in the supply chain, Accenture's point of view is very much just also an above the line uh, point that we need to keep focus on around supporting uh, the launch and development of new services and experiences that are wrapped around the product. So it's not just about making a widget, it's about how the, the organization can be ready to, to wrap other things around that, that product um, and really drive top line growth through innovation and, and growth. And this is just a little bit more detail. There's lots of different strands to this around, you know, clearly here the, the issue of analytics, cybersecurity, um, workforce and talent, and so on and so forth. So there's really a lot in, in this um, that, that I don't have time to go into in massive detail at the moment. But, but um, yeah, we, I, th I think we, we have some interesting perspectives on this idea that the factory of the future and the supply chain of the future will be smart, connected, living, and, and learning. Um, and then this is the idea of the digital factory and the, the many dimensions to this and how do, you, how do you kind of work through all this and where to start. We, we have these conversations a lot with companies at the moment where they're playing all the right notes but not in the right order necessarily um, and they're doing some of all of these things but, but not necessarily all of them. And they're of, often looking for benchmarking. So, we, you know, we're looking at the IT, OT interface, analytics, um, process life, product lifecycle management, um, an area that's very close to, to my heart as well is that it's often forgotten in, in talks about Industry 4.0 is this issue of quality control, the laboratory, the QC lab, the metrology lab, making sure that's efficient, it's not a bottleneck. Um, uh, how do you get the workforce digitally enabled, um, uh, automation, security, and so on. So there really is a, a huge amount to this that, that, that needs to be tackled, and, and different companies are at different stages along this, along this curvature. Um, and yeah, we, we would you know, argue that, that really it's in the combination of multiple technology. It's not just about data analytics, um, but it's about you know, better capture of data, industrial internet of things, you know, working with the, the, the core IT architecture, like your MES systems and your SCADAs and PLCs, but also then trying to bring in um, you know, increased sensorization and, and, and a more kind of agile approach to, to adding greater data capture um, for, uh, on your factory floor. And, and combining these, like robotic automation, AI, uh, and advanced analytics with IoT is, is really where the value can get unlocked. And the kind of you know, use cases we see for these, this combination is looking at things like um, 
predictive asset maintenance, and I'm not going to, again, dwell on any of these in any, in any great detail, but we see huge appetite for this in, in the industry at the moment, especially in discrete manufacturing, where, um, and also in areas like oil and gas, where, where there's very heavy utilization of assets and, and downtime on an asset can hu have huge imp negative implications on the supply chain. So trying to use advanced uh, analytics and machine learning to, to improve productivity and, and quality uh, within the supply chain. Again, looking at, at quality analytics, um, and ensuring this idea of the consistency of the product quality, not just about driving, lower, driving down cost of goods sold, but ensuring um, that you're, you're, you're having you know, zero defect in a, in a, and, and aspiring towards zero defect manufacturing as a, as a key KPI. And looking at yeah, this idea of combining these technologies to boost edge analytics, and I think Guillermo is gonna, is gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, this is just a, a case study of something we've done again in the, in the food and drinks industry where we've worked um, again with a company here, Ocado, to, to combine some of these technologies to help reduce waste, um, increase um, speed to release of products, and, and hence increase uh, shelf life of the product and, and drive out about 5% um, cost reduction from their, from their COGS. Um, uh, another case study from the automotive industry. This is a company, that, a sub-supplier into the automotive industry that makes some of the key sensors that are used in the autonomous uh, vehicle. Obviously, right first time, zero defect is, is critical in a space. You know, a failure of a sensor in these technologies is going to be, um, you know, a potentially huge issue for, for, for both this company and, and their, their customers. Um, and they had a very complex chemical manufacturing process involving aluminumization uh, process where they had some uh, critical tipping points where they had non-conformity and they didn't really understand that. So we worked with them to, um, to really understand the data they were collecting and collect more data that they weren't collecting to, to, um, to achieve a 19% reduction in, in non-conformity. And again, touching on that idea of, of zero defect manufacturing and quality. And then this is an example of something we've done with, with Schneider Electric, where we've um, created a digital twin of their, of their facility um, to help them build new offerings uh, and be more flexible in the, in the offering that they can, they can bring to their, their customers. This is just some research actually from a couple of years ago that, that Accenture did in, in, the, uh, in the manufacturing space. So we, we surveyed companies from around the globe in, in a number of, of industries, about 450 respondents. And you know, a key thing that kept coming up is this idea of increasing rapidly increasing complexity. So increased complexity, less time. Um, other issues around workforce unprepared, focus on quality, uh, lack of visibility, wanting to maximize capex and uh, asset utilization. These are some of the key problem statements that the companies are, are looking at globally and are common across many industries. Um, and what we're seeing some interesting stats around the, the adoption of, of Industry 4.0 thinking is actually happening quite aggressively in, in, in India, also qu quite a bit in Europe, a little bit of a lag from the US, um, uh, you know, at, at this data point at least. And also another uh, interesting uh, perspective is, is the idea that um, certain industries are adopting this more, more aggressively. So automotive being kind of the, currently the, the industry that, that's probably most aggressive in adoption of, of digital manufacturing. Um, and yeah, this is the, the, uh, the, uh, some of the technology that companies feel is, is likely to have the most impact in their productivity, in their quality metrics, in their ability to innovate. Um, this idea of the manufacturing control tower, which can also dovetail with the supply chain control tower and help companies just have visibility on what the hell is happening in complex manufacturing uh, environments and complex manufacturing supply chains. And you can see analytics and process monitoring really high up there in terms of technology that's already been implemented. So a lot to do, a lot done, but I, I think it's fair to say 30% adoption is probably still a bit modest than you would argue, given the amount of data that's being collected in manufacturing, which is I think widely known to be the manufacturing, the, one of the largest sources of data collection globally of, of any subsector, a lot more to be done in actually making use of this data. Just some perspectives on the life science sector because it's, it's close to my heart and it's a very important sector for Ireland um, given the amount of GDP of Ireland that's dependent on the export of, of pharmaceutical products and, uh, and medical devices. Right now, the medtech industry is probably a bit, away, a bit ahead of the pharma industry, closer to automotive in terms of adoption of, of industry 4.0 and, and probably a bit of the learning because medtech is discrete manufacturing a little bit like automotive. It, they probably have taken some learnings um, from aerospace and automotive. So a recent survey just this year that we've done of senior executives from the life science sector 
would say 50, um, 56% of, of companies in the medtech feel they're, they're, they're completely ready for, for digitization and manufacturing, 42% somewhat ready. And if you look at pharma, um, a little bit less, you know, more are, uh, slightly more are not ready at all, but quite a few, the majority feel they're, they're only somewhat ready. Um, so more to be done there. And, and if you look at pharma, this is uh, the urgent burning platform that they're faced with. I'm not going to drain this slide, but very briefly, if you look at pharma, 10 years ago, the, most complex, the, the best selling drug in the world was Lipitor. You had to manufacture that by stringing 33 carbon atoms together. Last year, the best selling drug in the world was Humira. You have to manufacture that by stringing 6,428 carbon atoms together. So this is the point that, again, products are becoming more complex. The other point I mentioned earlier, they're coming at companies more quickly. So 75% of new drugs for cancer were fast-tracked in the last few years. So companies have much less time to optimize their manufacturing process. And they're often launching um, more complex products with suboptimal manufacturing processes. And, and really doing it the old way that they did before without digitization is probably not sustainable. They're also focusing on producing a more, more personalized products, you know, more precision medicine that are, you know, so factories are instead of making one drug are making maybe several drugs, and that creates the challenges. And there's other issues there as well around outsourcing, combining drugs with devices and services, and actually making uh, products on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, all of which is creating huge complexity for companies. Um, we've started to do some nice work in this space with, with a, a global pharma company, uh, initially more on the supply chain side, where we've, we've used... Um, uh, a, a kind of a, a, a fast approach to create with, with, with the Accenture Insights um, platform, which is part of Paul Parati, who was here earlier, part of his group, um, and looking at segmenting the, the, comp the, the company's product family and helping them uh, facilitate management uh, optimization of inventory across multiple product types, saving about 30 million um, so far from inventory transformation. Um, and this, again, is some more data from, from that recent study that we showed where, uh, again, this idea of combining technology, not just analytics on its own, but, but, a, but a variety of technology across big data, digital twin, robotics, AI, uh, assisted reality or, ex or extended reality, uh, companies can, can, can increase up to 6.3 billion in market capitalization by helping to bring new products to market and save up to almost 100K per, per, per employee in terms of manufacturing costs. Um, However, medtech companies would say that the big obstacles they have is this idea that, that they have, well, they have great ideas and lots of things to do. They have maybe poor maturity of their, of their ecosystem partners that they you know, have to bring more companies with them on along the journey. And something that comes up quite often with, with our companies, they have you know, great potential to do data analytics, but they really have a, a challenge in finding the people to do this. Um, you know, and a number of other points as well that are, that are, are, are also up there on the board. Um, this is a project we did here recently with a client where, um, again, not to go into a lot of detail, but highly complex manufacturing uh, line for, for medical devices. Um, you know, they, they had the ability to do um, root cause analysis at a point in time, but, but hadn't really systematized this and had a high dependency on their engineers and subject matter experts. And so we worked with them to create a, a, an analytics base table, um, do exploratory analysis, build predictive models, a, a series of predictive models, not just one, um, and, and then built a, a kind of an easy to use visualization tool. So the, the result was uh, you know, a more standardized method to, to find root cause, user friendly, um, and, and essentially directing workers and engineers to the probable cause. Um, with the potential to save almost 7% uh, or possibly higher per production line on, on that site. And that's just the, the approach, again, I'm, I'm short on time, so I'm not going to go into this in detail, but again, the, the approach of taking a, a, you know, a short kind of discovery process of, of looking for proof of value, industrialization, and scaling um, across the site. And very briefly, um, just a bit of a, a you, you've seen some of our, our folks on the stand here, Accenture has, has really doubled down on the area of innovation in digital, and, and we have now got a global innovation hub here in Dublin. Um, it's the largest innovation center in, in, in uh, Accenture's network globally, so we're very proud of it, and doing some really nice work in, in, in projects relating to data analytics, and in particular in the area of manufacturing um, and supply chain. So we're doing a project called Project Alchemy, which is around biotech manufacturing, and you've seen, I think, a demo out on the stand here of our, our VR demo. Uh, Project Solus around machine vision, Diamond, is around looking at um, pharmaceutical label changes or, or any type of la label changes around um, complex products and also looking at, at cold chain technology with, with, uh, with, with Vodafone. So that's it for me. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And, uh